Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. You didn't even mention the best game of the week, Kansas City and L.A. That's going to be an insane game. Definitely take the over. Well, yeah, I don't know what I the over say, is, but take the over. Did you see what the over-under is for that game? No, what is it's it? It's 63. Whoa. And I think it's going to go over. I think it's going to go over that. 63 for sure. Both teams can score 30. Both teams can score 35 or 40. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, we discuss college basketball, injuries and coaching moves in the NHL, and sports network viewing preferences. But first, let's start with the National Football League. Okay, Skip, here we go. Another jam-packed episode. And uh, we're recording on a Friday just to let the listeners know, which is uh, odd for us. Or maybe it's rare for us, not odd. But um, this has actually been quite an exciting sports week. The National Football League. And maybe we'll go in chronological order. It all started on Monday night with this fantastic NFL football game that had all this hype. And oftentimes when there's a game that has so much hype before the game, usually Mm -hmm. it never lives up to the hype. But I have to say the, the Kansas City LA Rams game, it exceeded the hype. I'm not sure it did. Okay, well, it exceeded the hype for me because (laughs) there were more than 100 points scored total in the game, first of all. I I know all that, yeah. The team that lost scored 50 points, or actually 51, and a team... the first time ever. Yeah, Yeah. a team has never scored 51 points in an NFL game and lost. Well, it's the first time ever two teams scored 50 points. Also, that game broke fantasy football. It really... The only... (laughs) It's funny that you say it lived up to the hype. I, I, I didn't know you were going to start with this. Since we started our sort of new format, I don't want to say our new format, but our, our new way of, of starting the show, um, I never know what you're going to start with. That's right, you don't. I like right? to keep you on your and toes. And I was so sure you were going to start with Duke. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad you started with football. I, as I was watching that game, and it was interesting because we were texting like crazy back and forth during that game. Mm-hmm. which is very, very rare for a sporting event. We text each other all the time, random nonsense every day of the week at random hours, but very rarely during an actual sporting event going on where we're commenting on. It doesn't happen that often, mm-hmm. especially football, because as you've admitted 1,600 times, you don't watch all the games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I watched this game. Yeah. Um, since we started this podcast two years ago, I've told you many, many times that I think the NFL product the NFL as a product is not good. You have said that. And and as I was watching that crazy football game on Monday night, I was trying to... And I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I, I got sucked into it. I was into it. I was on the edge of my seat. I wanted to know what was going on. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, if I didn't have any fantasy football implications, or if other people watching that have no gambling implications, was it a good game? I think it was, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't, I don't have any fantasy football implications, and I love the game. Mm. I like right. offense, first of all, and it reminded me about. Uh, it reminded me of the Super Bowl, where first of yeah. all, no lead was safe, and you know when there was like four minutes left in the game or five minutes left in the game, I texted you. One of the crazy things that I texted you was, "There's going to be 14 more points scored in this game." <laughs> This was like with five minutes left. And I think there were 14 more points scored in the game well, at one in point, the last five at, minutes. So I was right. At one point, Kansas City was at by 10. And I was telling you, this game's not over. Of course like, not. Forget it. 10, no, 10 point lead not. is nothing in this game. And the other thing I really loved about it is they completely ignored the running game. Both teams. Like they didn't even yeah. need their running backs. They were no, both, but- both teams were like, here we go. I'm throwing this as far as I can throw it. Good luck yeah. if you can catch it. And it was great. But there's, still the th- but there's still the threat of the running game. Because when you look at the best offenses in the league, the three teams that have by far better offenses than anybody, it's the Rams, the Chiefs, and the Saints. Mm-hmm. And and then maybe number four, the Steelers. And if you look at all those teams, what do they have in common? They all are the teams that have good running games. Sure. You know? But you could have told the defense... I'm throwing the ball. They still couldn't have stopped it. Except at the end, when Pat Mahomes was just trying, you know, throwing Hail Marys because they had yeah, they were yeah. desperate to win the game, and he threw yeah. and he threw two picks. But other than that, like the defense couldn't really do much. 
I don't think there's a way to defense to to play defense on the passing game anymore when you're talking about like defending passes, corners, safety. I, I don't think there's a way you can guard the receivers. The receivers are too fast, they're too strong, and the rules are are all made so that you can't clutch and grab, you can't like make any contact. So I think defensive backs are at such a disadvantage they're at such a disadvantage. The only way you can defense the pass is what the Rams did to Mahomes is with the pass rush, right? <laughs> By getting pressure on him. And and I think I think the wave of the future is going to be sacks and touchdowns. That's what we're going to see. Well, I mean, look, baseball yeah. now is home runs or strikeouts, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And and football is getting to be the same way. I'm interested to see where the NFL is going to be in like a few years from now because it's so offensive. It's a flag Scoring, football league, is what it is. It well, I told you and I tweeted it. It's the NFF. It's the NFFL, the National Flag Football League. Yeah. Um, but the NFL is like a copycat league, right? So well, who are they copying you know, though? No, they copy each other. Teams see what other teams do oh, well, and they copy NBA their is plays. The same thing because now every yeah, NBA yeah. team is trying to be like Golden State. No, absolutely. But what happens in the NFL is there's always a defensive genius out there that figures out a way to stop what's happening. And trends come and go, you know, the passing games in style, then they're running games in style, then they're then they're running uh, motion, like offenses with four wide receivers. Then all of a sudden you're going to have two tight ends. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm interested to see if there's going to be like a defensive. Right now we're in the era of the young coaches who are all these offensive geniuses, right? That's what we see. We see these offensive geniuses mm-hmm. as coaches. And I wonder if there's going to be like some defensive genius that's going to come up and figure out how to how to somehow play defense against this you know, modern day passing attack, you know? So you're giving a lot of credit to these new young coaches. I'm going to take a little bit of the credit away from them. I mm-hmm. mean, not take away the credit because they are producing offense, but I don't know that they're geniuses as much as really what they are doing is going against old school philosophy you know old school yes. philosophy is oh no no we can't go for the two-point conversion we have to be safe and go for the one-point conversion or or it's fourth down we have to punt we can't go for it on fourth down and a lot of these mm-hmm. younger coaches they're going for it on fourth down or they're going for the two-point conversion and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but they're just going yeah. against the grain so they're not necessarily geniuses they're just using stuff that has been around for years but other coaches have chosen not to use it and now I think we're going the other way because we saw a couple of examples of coaches trying to basically outsmart themselves this past week and go so much against the grain. I don't know why they're doing it. Like the uh, Ron Rivera for, for the Panthers went for it on for on uh, went for a two point conversion where he could have tied the game with a with an extra point. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have you have that much, I know he missed an extra point in the game. Their kicker, but before that game, he's perfect for anything. He's literally perfect for anything inside the forty. <laughs> So, so he decided to go for two to win the game. They didn't get it, and they lost by a point. Although, if and if they do get it, we're not having this conversation, or we're having no, the conversation, course, and we're saying he's a genius. It, 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 that's exactly what happens because two years ago, on the opening game of the season, the Raiders coach and I forget who the Raiders coach was, Jack Del Rio. There you go. You're so good. Did you know that, or you read my mind? No, well, I, I I remember the play. He he went for it on. He went for two, and they won the game. And everyone's like, what a genius Jack Del Rio is. He, he reads the temperature of his team. He has the confidence of his players. And you know what? If Ron Rivera, if if Cam Newton actually makes an accurate throw, because he had a guy wide open yeah, there and exactly. he missed him, then everyone's calling Ron Rivera a genius. Now, let me continue by saying where I think they've jumped the shark on trying to outsmart themselves on this, on this modern offense. Sean McVay, on Monday night, completely butchered his time management when in the last two minutes of the game, I agree. Completely, I agree. He deserved to lose the game for what for what the way they did it because he ran three passing plays and some of them, at least one, resulted in an incompletion. You cannot have an incompletion when, when, when you're trying to kill the clock. All I, I I get it. You want to throw the ball, but the clock has to keep moving. You have to stay in bounds. You have to complete your pass. Right? They asked him afterwards, and he he wasn't so much that he wanted to pass, but he was actually trying to score more points because he yeah. thought that their lead wasn't big enough because in well, that game, there was do- no lead that was big enough. So he wasn't like, you could have run the ball three times or four times and, and, and killed more of the clock, but chances yeah. are they would not have gotten a first down had they done that. Well, and he was trying to get a first down and, and continue to score. Yeah, no, I get it. And, and I, I understand because too often when the other team knows you're going to come run and then you get stopped, 
You get stopped for a one yard gain, they call timeout. Then you get stopped for a one yard gain, they call timeout. Then you get stopped for a one yard gain, they call timeout. And now only like 10 seconds has gone off the clock and you're on fourth and seven, mm-hmm. right? So that that's definitely what you don't want to do. But I just, I just felt like all they had to do was keep the clock going. It's more important. If you can't get the first down, you have to keep the clock going. You know, so I'd rather I'd rather um, Goff take a sack there than throw an incompletion. To be honest, agreed, agreed. Now, now there was one thing about the Monday night game that I should mention this because I mentioned it earlier and I didn't follow up on it. It broke fantasy football. A lot of fantasy oh. football players who use Yahoo for their leagues noticed that there were mistakes yeah. right after the game. They weren't getting credit for some of the points. And then eventually Yahoo realized the problem and fixed it either in the middle of the night or by the time everyone woke up the next day. So I don't The play... article that you sent me, yeah. The article you sent me said like at four o'clock in the morning they had everything updated, but people went to bed thinking they lost. Right, you know? right. Including myself, which I still did lost. Right, lose. right. Because I guess they weren't getting credit for some of the uh, of the points they deserved. Now I don't want to I know people don't are not interested in our fantasy football, but just to tell you that I was losing by eighty eight points. <laughs> going into the Monday night football game. Did you Think have about anybody that. playing on Sunday? How do you how are you down by 88? It's it's a it's a crazy scoring. It's not traditional scoring, oh, but it's still but it's still it's still a lot of points, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. But I had Goff, <laughs> Reynolds, Brandon Cooks, and the kicker of Kansas City. Mm-hmm. That's who I had playing in the Monday night game. And I ended up losing by less than 3. <laughs> Cuz so there's, so there's, like, there's like there's like there's like decimal points in the league, you know? It's like so if Kansas City would have kicked a tying field goal, which they could have done, right? Mm-hmm. All they were trying to do was getting to field goal range. If they would have kicked a tying field goal, I would have won the week. And then he threw an interception, and that was the end. He actually had two chances to go down and kick a field goal. You know, like they gave the ball away. By the way, when I played, when I used to play fantasy football, I always waited till the second to last round to pick my kicker because I never thought yeah. it was that important. And now these days, mm-hmm. kickers are even less important because. Teams aren't going, you know, they're not kicking the extra point as much as they used to. And yeah. teams are going for the touchdown a lot more often than the field goal these days. The the position that's quite irrelevant now is defense. You used to know who the better defenses were. Mm-hmm. I'm in another league. I'm in the father-son league with Mark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Jacksonville defense was in the pile two weeks ago. Think about that. Although in this crazy 54 to 51 game or whatever the final score was, both defenses yeah. racked up a lot of points because there were turnovers and interceptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't you mean can't, they're good defenses, though. No, no, no. The, the the way to get points now in fantasy football is with def- with turnovers. It's like the points and the yards. That that's that's out. You know that that's that's gone. So, by the way, I mentioned Jack Del Rio's name. The Raiders would have been better off keeping him as the coach because ever since he left, they've oh, been horrible. Oh, oh. I don't know. It's dark times for the Raiders right now. Dark times, that's for sure. One thing I want to mention about the Monday night game that I didn't like Mm -hmm. is the broadcast crew that they used this year. Oh, my God. I'm so happy you said this. You don't understand. Let me just tell you. I I was ready to put the TV on mute. I I couldn't listen to them anymore. I I couldn't. So I I just, so you know, and so the listeners know, I take notes throughout the week of things that I'm going to talk about on this show. Mm -hmm. And I've had this one note in my phone for like a month and I've never mentioned it because it just didn't come up or it didn't fit into the conversation. (laughs) So I never mentioned it. And then I deleted it because I figured, well, if I haven't talked about it now, I'm never going to talk about it. But then you, but then you texted something to me this week and I said, Oh, I'm going to put it back on the list. And that note was, I can't stand Booger McFarland. Look, but what, what's your beef with Booger? Well, it's not so much him, but the role that they have him doing First of all, I agree he's on 100%. this weird little chair that moves around, which is annoying. I don't understand it. And I then don't second of all, it. like he's well, he's like any other sideline reporter. He doesn't add anything to the game that I need to hear. He's add he adds some like X's and O's and talks about like r- some stuff in the game. He he brings a little bit of insight, but I don't understand that wacky chair that they have him in. Like he would he would see better from the booth. Right, I guess like, it's, he he's elevated like like over the field, but like it's I don't know. It's just I don't understand that weird chair that he's in. Well, it's but like we get in the NHL they have that guy now between the two benches on the ice. Between the two benches, at least I know. But he, between the two benches, he's between the two benches. He sees what's going on at ice level. Mm. This is like twenty feet up from the field. It's kind of bizarre, no? 
it is bizarre to me, but whatever. You know, they're they're always I trying to do try, innovative things because they want people to watch. Yeah. Yeah, they, they think that they think there's a cool factor to it, and then they're the only ones doing it and whatever. But can we talk about the the play by play? And Jason Witten is fine as the as the color guy, mm -hmm. and but I don't know how to pronounce his name. What is Joe? Joe Tessitore. Te Je Joe Tessitore. Yeah, he's the one that I mentioned that really likes Formula One racing and goes to uh, Crescent Street oh, in Montreal guy. every summer. I couldn't I I couldn't stand listening to him on Monday night. You may bump into him the, uh, this summer in Montreal. The number of times that he said, these two MVP candidates, teams loaded with young stars, an epic battle, an instant classic. He, he told us like 16 times that we were watching an instant classic. You know what, Joe? We know. We're watching it. <laughs> you know, we're, I'm aware of what I'm watching. He Like, you can say it once, this is an instant classic, but he kept saying it. And any time, like... Kansas City scored. Then, then the Rams get the ball back. Here's Jared Goff. Now let's see what this young MVP candidate can do. Like every single time, the, it was like the hyperbole and the hype. It's like just call the game. We know how good it is. You know, you don't you don't have to tell us how good it is. It's like when Kirk Gibson hit the home run in the World Series in Game One against the A's. You ever hear the radio call? Um, Vin Scully or a different yeah. guy. Yeah, he hits it. Vin Scully says, I can't believe what I just saw. And there's 30 seconds of the crowd cheering. Yes. Vin Scully doesn't have to tell you how great it is. He doesn't have to tell you that it's the greatest home run in history. You know that it's the greatest home run in history if you're watching, you know? Yes. It's just, I, I, I couldn't, they're trying so hard, you know, the, the announcers these days. They're trying so hard. They just have to like, let it be, let the game come to, let it, let it, let it breathe, you know? You're right. You're absolutely right. But like they, they. They're sort of told, I mean, not in this instance, because this game was very exciting and you didn't have to add any excitement to it. But sometimes broadcasters are doing a really boring game and they want the, the, the yeah. viewers to stay tuned in. So they try to drum yeah. up phony interest so that you won't turn off the TV or change a channel. But that wasn't yeah. necessary. But do you remember? Game. Do you remember it was like 15 years ago, maybe? Or I don't know that I, I could be completely making this up, the dates. But at one point, the CBC um, people were on strike. All the broadcast crews. Yes, I do remember. This is more than okay. 15 years so, ago. So the, the announcers are actually technically part of that situation, right? Or I think they were. Anyways, but whatever whatever the circumstances were, there were hockey games broadcast on Saturday night on CBC Hockey Night in Canada mm -hmm. that had no announcers. Yes. I, it was just the game and you watched it and there was no I announcers. it was at least 20 years ago. It was great. <laughs> well, well, didn't miss the announcers. Well, do you remember? Didn't do you remember um, way, way back when Howard Cosell used to do Monday Night Football? There yeah. were a lot of people that couldn't stand Howard Cosell, and so one week yeah. they decided they were going to have no, no play-by-play -play at all on the Monday Night Football. Yeah, and I think it was yeah. the highest-rated Monday Night Football game up until that point. Wow, that's I mean, crazy. I think a bunch of games have passed it since, but at that time, it was the highest-rated Monday Night Football game. A good announcer should should blend into the the event that they're calling. They shouldn't they shouldn't try to be like part of the event. It sh they just need to be be there, sort of guiding you. You know, not 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 making themselves the part of the the show. You know, well, like the referees. Well, the referees don't get me started. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to get you started. Actually, I didn't know you were going to go off on this. No, no, the referees are fine. So um, yesterday was Thanksgiving in the United States. So happy Thanksgiving to all our American listeners. Yes. Or or for most of our Canadian listeners, you know, happy Thursday. Um, did you watch any games yesterday? Those Thanksgiving I, I watched, Day football I games? watched parts of all the games. Um, mm -hmm. I have to tell you something funny about the games. So my my um, no one cares about the pool that I'm in where I just keep doing worse and worse every week where I have to pick against the spread. But um, I basically given up. Like I can't win the the overall thing at the end of the at mm -hmm. the end of the year. But there are weekly prizes. So there's still right. it's still worth it for me to submit my picks. Um, but this week when I was going over the picks, I, I'm like, you know what? Who cares? Like I'm not gonna sit here and pay and 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 look at every game and think about it for 30 seconds or 60 seconds or 90 seconds. I basically just blindly, I picked every single favored team to cover the spread this week. 
Re- regardless okay, of who they, so regardless far. of who they were playing or or what the spread was. And yeah, so the Saints covered, the Cowboys covered. Yeah, all three teams covered. So right now I'm three and zero. Oh. That's great. Love it. So the less thought there you wasn't put really... into it, the better you actually do. <laughs> there really wasn't much to watch yesterday. So, I mean, I I, I just kept a, an eye on the scores, but I really had no interest in any of the games at all. You know? That division with uh, the Cowboys and the Redskins is is horrendous. The Eagles could still win the division. That's how that's bad how it bad is. it is. But whoever wins the division, I think they're done. They're out in the first round. I can't see any of those teams making a dent. Okay, can you? The only the only games that any of those teams has won have been against bad teams, and they're not going to play against a bad team in the first round of the playoffs. Whoever wins no, that division sure. is going to play a good team in the first round. They're going to be out. Yeah, no, I mean, you're going to have to eventually, and even if it's, maybe they can squeak by in the first round, but then eventually you're going to come up against the Rams or the Saints, and then you're finished. Yeah. No? Do you want to go back in time? You started talking about Monday night. Right. Well, I mean, we were going in chronological order, I guess. No, you weren't. Well, yeah, we started with Monday night. I know, but there was something that happened before the football game on Monday night. There was? (laughs) College basketball. Yeah, Duke was on TV. Well, Duke was on TV three times this week. Monday I know. and Tuesday I wanted to, and Wednesday. I wanted to... You, you mentioned last week that it's like... This is like the golden age for watching college basketball on TSN. And actually, if you're a Duke fan, it's, it's unprecedented because they were on actually every day this week. So let's back up for a second. Before we start yeah. talking about the Duke game specifically, I have a few things I have to get off my chest. Okay. Um... So every sport, every league has, you know, iconic franchises that that people love and people hate. Like in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys and the New England Patriots. And in baseball, the Yankees and the Red Sox. And in basketball, the Lakers and the Celtics. And in hockey, the Canadians and the Leafs. So in college basketball, one of those teams, if not the most hated team, is the Duke Blue Devils. It's definitely the most hated. And... I could see, I mean, we are both Duke fans, but I can see all these people who are Duke haters, every time they turn on ESPN in the last month, all ESPN talks about is Duke. How good is Duke? How good is Zion Williamson? Is this team going to go undefeated? Can they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers? If you're a Duke hater, you probably want to vomit because of all this coverage that ESPN is providing. Yeah. And now it's great for you and I, because I've never gotten to see this many Duke games, so I'm enjoying it. But I just, I, yeah. it's, it's, I could see how people would get annoyed with all this coverage, is what I'm trying to say. Well, on the halftime show of one of the games this week, um, Jason Williams, well, he calls himself Jay Williams yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He's actually a good analyst. <laughs> uh, for, he's a good analyst. And what, what must anger other Duke haters also is that the ESPN broadcast was full of Duke guys. Jay Billis. Right? Jay right. Williams. So he he made a good point. He's like, if you Jay Williams made a good point. He said, if you talk, look at what are the biggest stories right now in basketball, and not we're not talking about college basketball. We're talking about basketball, pro, college, whatever. Mm-hmm. There's like, what's going on at the time? What's going on with the Golden State Warriors? You know, with Draymond Green and Kevin Durant, um, the Raptors with Kawhi Leonard. And then next thing, uh, LeBron James on the Lakers. Like, those are the big stories, right, in, in the NBA. And then there's Duke, right? That's like, it's right there, right? They're they're taking such a national, uh, they're taking a big, big, big piece of the national spotlight right, right, right now, you know? They are. And so we have... And then, of course, they lost on, on uh, yesterday. Right. So. so they finally lost the game. On Wednesday, sorry. Yeah, they finally lost yeah. the game. They lost to a, a really good Gonzaga team who actually is missing one of their best players who's injured. Um, and I texted you saying that they were going to lose. I told you they were going to lose. Did you tell me that? I told you after the Auburn game, like they didn't play well against Auburn. I said if they play like that, they're not going to beat Gonzaga. Right. Well, they didn't. And they and and they didn't play like that for for three quarters of the game. For the last five minutes of the game, Duke decided they were going to try. You what know? was interesting about that game? So in the last six minutes, I think Duke went on a twenty eight to twenty one to eight run. And right. they ended up tying up the game with like, I don't know if it was 45 seconds left or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. During that six minutes where they were on this crazy run, you I'm sure you noticed the same things that I noticed. First of all, Cam Reddish hardly played in those six minutes. He, well, he had four fouls. Right. He only so came were, into the yeah. game when someone, I think it was Jack White, fouled out. So they had to bring somebody in. Yeah. But the other thing yeah. that happened that I didn't quite understand in the last six minutes was 
Duke stopped taking any outside shots at all. Everything was driving yeah. to the basket, which... But I like well, that. Well, it worked That's sometimes, what they have to do. but it didn't work in the last minute of the game at all. It's hard when you... I've told you this before. When you look at, like, the iconic shots in history, like great shots in basketball, buzzer beaters, winning shots, they're mostly all jump yeah, shots. Yeah, they are. <laughs> because, you know why? Because when you drive at the end of a game, you're going to get fouled, and they don't call all the fouls at the mm-hmm. end, right? So players know that if they take to the ball to the basket, they're just going to get destroyed, mm-hmm. and it's not going to get called, so they don't want to take those shots. Okay, so you then know? why Pull then, up jumpers. knowing that, why then didn't they ever kick it out to the three-point line? Because apparently Duke has like five guys who can hit three-pointers from anywhere, and they didn't even well, take... Well, I don't know about well, that. They didn't even take... They didn't even attempt a three-point shot I think in the last five yeah. minutes of the game. Well, Reddish is the only got really reliable three point shooter. The others are adequate. No, no, R.J. Barrett can hit three pointers. Even Zion Williamson. He's can hit not three great. Did you see? He's not great. Did you see in all the previous games? No, they can hit shots, but that's not their bread no, and butter. Of course. You know, they're not. Yeah. So it just it, it it frustrated me. It reminded me of the Duke game against Connecticut when Trajan Langdon was on the team. Oh. The final game of the season, the championship game, yeah. where he had the ball yeah. and he never even got a shot off and Duke ended up losing the yeah. game. So similar thing yeah. happened here. R.J. Barrett has the ball. I mean, not many, not many other guys you would rather have the ball in their hands other than R.J. Barrett, but he didn't yeah. even get a shot off. Like, at least get yeah. a shot off. Yeah. Give yourself a chance to tie the game, win the game, whatever it is. I was happy they lost. I didn't care. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not listening. It's 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 a game in November. It's not the end of the world. It's a no, exactly, and and they, and and they're all teenagers, and like they got to learn how to play together. They got to learn how to win. They got to learn how to lose. They got to learn how to play close games. You know, the whole the whole point of a season when you're in this one and done era is to try to just get better from the start of the season till the time you get to the tournament. You know. I mean, we're not Duke's not not in danger of missing the no, tournament. No, they're not. You know? And they're probably going to so, lose other so, games because they have one of the toughest schedules in in the in the country. Yeah. So you know, like the whole point is to just keep getting better, and that's for, that goes for all the teams. That goes for Gonzaga too. By the way, who looks like a very strong team now? Gonzaga, they actually might go undefeated because they're in a very weak yeah. conference. Yeah. And they've got a player, a really good player, who's injured, who's going to come back in in a week or two, or or maybe a yeah. few. I don't know how many weeks. They're only going to get better. Yeah, so, no, they're they're strong. But Gonzaga is like, they've come a long way from like the when they were considered like a, the mid major or like the Cinderella team. You know, they're they're a they're a, a real real um, legit program now that's there every year, and you expect them to be you expect them to go far in the tournament every year. You do, but it's funny they've only gone to the final four once, I think. Yeah, I think you're so, right. So like all the talk about them every year, but they've only gone to the final four once. But they have that guy, uh, what's his name, the Japanese guy? Ryu? Is that his first name? Yeah, Hachimura. Hachimura. I think Hachimura. I think you were right the first time. Hachimura. He's tall. He's um, big. He looks good. He looks like a real player. So I don't know if you listened to any of the post-game quotes from the coaches or the players. No. no. So um, at one point, I, I was listening to one of these new podcasts that I listened to, and they go in-depth into a lot of the games, and one of the guys was actually – at all the games in Maui. And so he was talking about how in that game, RJ Barrett wanted to go one-on-one with Hachimura. That's the matchup that, that Barrett wanted. And Hachimura, mm-hmm. who doesn't speak perfect English because he's Japanese, apparently he said in the post-game press conference, when he realized that that's what Barrett wanted, he was like, you want to go up against me? You think that I'm your best matchup? Okay, fine. I'll show you. And he showed him. I mean, there were a few times that Barrett got the best yeah. of him, but at the end, he yeah. got the best of Barrett. No, well, of course, Hachimura, especially on the defensive end. I mean, he's tall and and, and he's a shot blocker. He's an he's super athletic. You know. By the way, uh, I don't know if you watched any of the other games from Maui, the ones that didn't involve Duke, because they had different uh, play by play guys and different color commentators for some of the other games. And I have to tell you, I've said this before. I probably said it a year ago on this show. Bill Walton has lost it. Oh, too many drugs. Uh, he's 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 not the there. The things that come out of his mouth are unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. No, he's 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 not all there. It's amazing that you have Bill Walton on some games who like literally doesn't know what planet he's on, and and then you have Jay Billis who, like you say, is like the only guy worth having and listening to his opinion. Yeah. 
you know, because he's so intelligent about the sport. I was sport. just like, yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I was shaking my head. I'm like, did you just say that? Did he really just say like, and not just like one thing? Like another five minutes yeah. later, he'd say something else. He was actually he did say something funny. They kept showing during the games. They kept showing the bracket for the tournament because the losing yeah. teams still continue to play. So the bracket is not like your regular bracket. Um, right. So they would show it. It seemed like every five minutes, I guess they didn't have much to talk about. And so Bill Walton says, have we broken the record on how many times we're going to show the bracket during a game? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So just thought that was funny. The National Hockey League. Uh, we need to talk a little. We need to talk a little NHL. I would love to. Uh, you have to answer a question for me, please. I I don't shoot me shoot me I a question. I don't get to watch um, many Canadians games, but I read this little little thing on the uh, on the ticker on the lower third of the screen. Yeah. Noel Juleson, who who apparently is having a, a nice rookie season, from what I've heard. Yeah, he's a good player. He in the same game apparently he took two pucks to the face in the same game. Yeah. So I yeah. didn't see the game. Back to back shifts. Let me ask you this question. If you've taken a puck to the face, why do you go back out for a second shift after that? Well, the, the first one, the first one he got hit, he wears a visor, okay. right? So the first one he got hit just like below the visor and he stayed in the game and then he goes out for his next shift and he gets hit in the face again. So did he, did he come back a third time after that or? No, he left. They went to, he went to the hospital and now he's out indefinitely. Okay. They don't know when he's coming back. Facial fractures. I mean, I don't know that I would have come out after the first puck in the face. I no, probably would have gone home know. after that. That's why he's in the NHL and we're doing this yes, show. Yes, but does he have his own podcast? <laughs> no, good point. You can, you, this is not a safe job either. No, We, we could no. pull muscles turning our neck. You never know. <laughs> Unplugging cables. Exactly. So did you notice, did you notice also in the NHL, something happened on Thursday in the NHL on Thanksgiving Day that has only happened once this year and I think mm -hmm. will only happen one more time this year. Which is? There were no games. Oh, there were no games. Well, that's Thanksgiving. I don't think they've ever done that before. And then you texted me that the Canadians are playing at 4 o'clock today. In fact, they're playing in a few minutes. This is honestly... the I, I thought you were no, wrong. No, no, Which I should never doubt you because when it comes to television and game and schedules, times and scheduling, like... I should, uh, the, the, you're, you always know what's going on, but there like, are, there are just it's the first time in my life. It's the first time in my life that I, that I remember the, any team, the Canadians playing a four o'clock well, game. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving in the States, as you know, the game is. I know, in, in I know, level. I know why they're doing and, it, but four o'clock. And there I are mean. four other NHL games that are starting at four o'clock today. Not just that one. It's wild. And, and I think the it's Rangers wild. played this afternoon at one o'clock. Like the game's already over. It's cool that they're playing on Thanksgiving day. I think it's good for for the American markets that are hosting the games. Good By the them, way, you know. have to, you I have another question. This really isn't a question. It's more of a statement. Thanksgiving in the States. Mm -hmm. Huge. It's a bit of a scam. And here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. <laughs> like most holidays like Labor Day and Thanksgiving in Canada and Easter and the list goes on. They're usually on Mondays. So you yeah. get your weekend plus you get the extra day. Thanksgiving yeah. in the States. It's in the middle of the week. Like who it's wants a, a holiday on a Thursday? So so well, so what's supposed to happen is really you're supposed to get the Thursday off and you're supposed to go back to work on Friday. But that doesn't happen. No, no, no. That doesn't happen. Once no, no. that happening is businesses are you closed. Get Thursday off, you get Friday off and Saturday and Sunday. You're almost getting an entire week off. And then I was well, talking let me tell you. I was talking to a friend of ours, Book, <laughs> who has kids. Yeah. His kids, right. they get the entire week off, not just Thursday yeah, and Friday. Yeah, I know they they have they have like the Thanksgiving break instead of a winter midwinter break like we have in Canada sometimes they have this what off. slackers? Well, I as you know I work for a huge American company, I know. so um, offices are closed Thursday, offices are closed Friday, as you said. Mm -hmm. So I'm haven't been working today and yesterday, and not only that, early closing at twelve thirty on Wednesday. <laughs> What a scam. Or two o'clock, I think, maybe. Like, so depending on your manager or your workload, but like you go home early on Wednesday. So basically I had the whole week off. Good for you. Yeah, I know. I worked, I worked on, uh, I worked the one day of Canadian Thanksgiving so I could have the three days off for America. It's a good trade. You made a good deal for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I did. So can we go back to hockey for a yeah, sec? Yeah, well, we never really left hockey. What do you, how do you feel about Ken Hitchcock, uh, 
being named hired as the coach of the Oilers. So this is one of the things I had on my list. Not so much Ken Hitchcock specifically, but I have I have some comments. Mm-hmm. Is about Ken Hitchcock specifically. I'm pretty sure he said that he was done coaching last time he got fired or quit or whatever it was. I'm pretty sure you're right. So what happened between then and now that he's now all of a sudden coaching again? I guess maybe he missed it or they convinced him. I don't know. The 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 opportunity to coach Connor McDavid? I I, I don't know. I'm don't just know. thinking. But here's uh, but uh, here's what bugs me. You know, you know how I feel about coaches being fired. So in pretty much every sport, professional sport that is, coaches get too much blame when the team loses and too much yeah. credit when the team wins. So you want to yeah. fire the coach, go ahead and fire the coach. But the coach is only as good as the roster that you've provided him. Yeah. And I don't know that well, I, don't, I, I think, don't know that it's going to make any difference. Well, I think that the, there's a feeling in Edmonton and I mean it starts with their GM who's completely incompetent if you ask me, but um that the roster is good and somehow the coach wasn't getting enough out of them. You know, cuz 2 years ago they had a nice run in the playoffs and everyone thought, "Okay, the Oilers are this big up and coming team." And then they haven't made the playoffs since then and then they got off to a terrible start this mm-hmm. year. So, I guess they want this I guess they feel like maybe Ken Hitchcock can somehow turn it around, but I mean, he's such a total defensive coach, don't you find? He's a dinosaur. Yes, he is. It's like we were talking about with the NFL coaches. He's not like one of the young up and coming innovative coaches, certainly not. No. No, no, certainly not. But maybe he's going to make the players accountable. Who knows? Maybe they feel there's something missing. But, like, I find it hard to digest the fact that, you know, the same GM is firing his coach. He's laying blame on the coach, you know, where, you know, and Chiarelli, the GM of Edmonton, I mean, like, he traded Taylor Hall basically for nothing. Well, he did get a good defenseman, and they do need defensemen. So Taylor Hall went well, on is to he be— really, Is he really a good defenseman? He's okay. I mean, they, that team has enough offense. They should have been able to yeah. trade Taylor Hall uh, and still survive. And, and, and But you should have got much more for Taylor well, Hall. Maybe you should have, although the truth is before they traded him, he wasn't an MVP. He only became an MVP after they traded him. And by the way— when they announced the awards last year, we said this on the show. I couldn't believe that Taylor Hall won the MVP last year because I think there were at least three other players, if not more, that were more deserving than him. There was a lot of candidates last year, but I mean, he certainly had a great year and he's certainly a great player. I like. I just feel that they traded a great player and they got a good player. Right. I mean, he maybe could have gotten more, but what other defenseman, let's say all-star defenseman, was out there that's know. available that you Doesn't could get? doesn't matter. Sometimes the best trade is the one you don't I agree. make. I understand. You know, I, you, you, when you have a guy who's a former first overall pick, he's a total game breaker, you don't just say we're going to give up on him, you know? Well, the other guy that was drafted, was it right before or after Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan? The, Bru- the Bruins yeah. traded him. He's the same GM. <laughs> the same guy. He was the coach. He was the GM of the Bruins well, back did, then. He, he traded both of them. Didn't that GM win the Bruins a Stanley Cup? <laughs> Yes, they so, did. So, you know, he must have done something right. <laughs> yeah, he must have. Well, good luck to the Oilers. If there's any Oiler fans out there, I hope I uh, hope it works out for you. But, I mean, I'm not a huge Ken Hitchcock guy. I just feel like his 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 days are gone, you know? It's like it's, it's a different league now. So one other thing. Um, mm-hmm. There's, in, in Ontario, certainly, there's a lot of uh, talk about which sports network is the best sports network, either TSN or Sportsnet. I think... There's a debate about this? Yeah, there are people, you know, some people prefer TSN, some people prefer Sportsnet. Uh, you know, it depends what yeah. depends what your preference is. In okay. the province of Quebec, you probably don't talk about it as much because you guys talk about RDS and TVA sports. Uh, I mean, RDS is so Habs-focused, you know. It's... But so is TVA. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, they're showing what's popular here, which is the Canadians kind of encompass everything, right. you know? And listen, both TSN and Sportsnet cover the Leafs like crazy. They both cover yeah. the the Raptors like crazy. And yeah. and um, and Sportsnet does a much better job of covering the Jays because they have every single Jays game. So well, they have the access. So, yeah. I mean, depending on what sport you like, you might have a preference over one network or the other. But... I was thinking mm-hmm. about it the other day because I don't really have a preference. If the thing I want to watch is on TSN, I'll watch TSN. Mm-hmm. If it's on Sportsnet, mm-hmm. I'll watch Sportsnet. I don't really care. 
But I thought about all the stuff that I watch on TSN. Mm-hmm. And it occurred to me, well, I'm going to tell you, I watch Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football, uh, Duke College Basketball, other college basketball, um, Pardon the Interruption. So everything I've mentioned so far, all those things that I watch, none of them are produced by TSN. They just grab the feed from ESPN or Fox or some other American network. Right. The only thing that I watch on TSN that that TSN actually produces is Jay and Dan sometimes. Eh, it's not even so good. And and the World Juniors, and that's it. Yeah, but what do you watch on Sportsnet? On Sportsnet, I'll watch baseball. I'll watch hockey. Because they they yeah. have most of the hockey now. They have the rights, um, yeah. And uh, that's about well, it. Well, and then yeah, and then you know the the nightly news show that they have. You don't watch misplays of the month with Caroline. Schmidt. I do watch it sometimes, but I mean, <laughs> that's not something that's appointment viewing. If you're flipping around and there's nothing to watch, and you come across it, you'll leave it on. But you don't go out of your yeah. way to watch that. No, you no. don't. I I prefer TSN, just. And I know it's going to sound weird, and I don't even know if I can properly put it into words. Um, it's the way the broadcast is done. Every single thing on the channel, I there's something about the picture quality of TSN as compared to Sportsnet. And it's probably just a preference. It's the way Sportsnet broadcasts their signal. It's a much more brighter signal on um, Sportsnet, more more light. And on TSN, it's like more of a contrast, which I think for me, it's more pleasing to the hmm. eye. I never noticed that. <laughs> that's that's all I have to say okay, about I'll that. I'll pay attention next time. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcast Stitcher, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, we'd love to hear from you via email, skip and Josh show at gmail.com, Twitter at skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page and skip and is the website with all the links. We leave you with this. You have anything to uh, close the show out? I do. I, I'm, I'm hoping that you've seen this commercial. There's this really good commercial and mm-hmm. it's, it's for the NFL shop. And it was on quite a bit, uh, I think, yesterday and, me- and maybe even on Monday during the Monday night game. Yeah, which one is where, it? So um, this Eagles fan, and this is why I, I'm mentioning it, an Eagles fan... He gets into the yeah, elevator yeah. with all the merchandise. So, so I'm going to tell the, the listeners in case they haven't uh, seen the commercial. An Eagles fan, he's got all this Eagles merchandise. He's wearing an Eagles sweater and, and he's carrying all this Eagles stuff. And he gets into an elevator. There's already someone in the elevator. It's a Cowboys fan. And the Cowboys fan is getting off like at the fifth floor or something. And this Eagles fan wants to get off at like the 10th floor. So he asks him if he could push 10. But the Cowboys fan, he pushes 10. But he also pushes 9, 8, 7, and 6. So that it stops. And he at, runs out of the elevator. So that it stops yeah. at every single floor. So, but then as the guy's leaving the elevator, the Eagles fan says to him, Super Bowl champions! He does say that. That's right. <laughs> I just thought it was a very funny you, commercial. You forwarded me a very interesting article this week, and I'm stealing this from you. I don't know if you wanted to talk about it or not, but um, the running back from the University of Georgia yeah. by the name of Prather Hudson, yes. he he collided on the sideline with the ESPN uh, sideline reporter by the name of Laura yes. Rutledge, <laughs> who happens to be um, former, uh, I think, Miss Florida or yeah, something. Yeah, in, 20, in 2012, she, she was Miss Florida. She's quite beautiful. So um, after the game, and he really collided with her oh, heart. It looked like, like she was going to have to go to hospital. Yeah. So after the game, he tweeted, "Hey, Laura Rutledge, I really sorry. I'm really sorry I knocked you down, but can I pick you up at seven? It was a funny tweet, and and, and apparently yeah. all she responded was was with uh, LOL. Yeah, because what happened is her fans responded after, saying she's married. Yes. She's married to and she's then, married to Josh Rutledge, who is is a, is a professional is a professional baseball player. Yeah, yeah. Um, he actually he played for the Red Sox this past season. Uh, you know, I think he had like a hundred at bats or something for the Red Sox. Oh, okay. Um, but right now he's a free agent. <laughs> okay. I wonder if it'll help his career. I wonder. That's all I got. All right. I'll talk to you next time. Okay. Bye.